morning. Well, it's been a while, so today's video is just a recap to catch you up with what's been going on since our last video. The in-ground plumbing is all complete, and this is what it looked like as I was installing it. We'll start here in the shower room. So we're going to have a nice uh, a pull chain shower. You can get a fresh rainwater shower anytime you want. Uh, and that'll drain through here. I have a brick here to keep the critters out and then also the we're gonna put in an earthen floor so the floor will actually be four inches higher by the time it's all said and done. And then over here we have the uh, normal bathroom sink kind of thing with the mirror and all that that drains there. This is just a vent for the system. These two anchors are gonna hold up supports for the loft above and they also act as a partition wall to separate the shower room from the kitchen. So here's the drain for the kitchen sink. And then moving further back, we have another partition wall and everybody's favorite, the composting toilet room. So this is the drain for this hand washing sink and the composting toilet room. All of these drains flow into one main line. You can see the clean out right there and it comes down here and it goes underneath the foundation, again, encased in concrete out to the gray water system. This is the outlet for the drainage system. Uh, you can see this big pipe is the foundation drain. You might remember that from a previous video. Uh, any water that gets into the foundation is going to make its way out through this pipe here. Uh, and then over here we have the gray water line. Now this is only temporary uh, because I haven't installed the leach field yet. So eventually this is going to carry out into some pipes that will disperse the water underground and we'll have a small garden that's irrigated by the gray water system. Now it's important to make a distinction between gray water and black water. Black water is water that it would, might come from your toilet. It's something that has bacteria and things in it that you really don't want out in your yard. So it goes to the city sewer or into a septic tank. Gray water is water that might come from a washing machine or from a, a bathroom sink, some the hand washing sink, something like that. that you can reuse and you know water plants with. So I've designed this to be completely gray water. There's no black water. Because of the composting toilet, we don't have black water. Now most municipalities consider kitchen sink water to be black water because of you know things like garbage disposals or food waste going down the drain. Uh, it can grow bacteria and you really don't want uh, people exposed to that out in their yards. So um, in this case, there's not going to be a garbage disposal for this kitchen sink, and I'm screening out the, way, the drain so that any food materials get caught in the screen. And I also am going to have a grease trap for that as well. So uh, be careful if you're gonna put a kitchen sink onto your gray water system because you're probably gonna have to get a variance uh, to get that done. This is what I've completed so far of the rainwater harvesting system. So the rainwater will fall on the roof and it'll flow to the sides where the downspouts will bring it in to here. And there's going to be a first flush diverter here for each downspout. And that takes the first 50 gallons of water and washes it down to the normal drain right here on both sides. Uh, and that keeps just like dust and dirt and, you know, bird poop from getting into the cistern. After the first 50 gallons has been flushed down there, the water will start to flow down this main uh, downspout. And this main line goes down under the foundation and over to the cistern over here. Uh, and then coming back from the cistern, back under the foundation, is our main water supply line for the building. Now anywhere I put pipes under the foundation, I had to encase them in concrete. That way there's not a weak point in the foundation and also the weight of the wall doesn't crush the pipes. I've also gotten a lot finished with the foundation. Uh, you can see the fabric trench liner. It goes down and underneath the gravel and then I filled this with one inch gravel and then uh, was able to put in some gravel bags. Now I got really lucky. Uh, the company that delivers my gravel brought me the wrong material. I was ordering the one inch gravel to fill the foundation with and they brought me crusher finds uh, which I cannot use for the foundation. So, um, but they ended up being perfect 
for the gravel bags. Now I had to sift all of it. It was five tons of gravel that I had to sort through, but it was well worth it because I was able to do two courses of gravel bags, which is gonna make a better foundation for this building. Uh, so that catches you up to where I'm at right now. Um, and where I'm at right now is a change of plans. Originally, I had intended for the door to be right here at ground level, and then you walk down a few steps into the building. Uh, but I realized that those steps are going to take up way too much floor space in an already small building. So I moved them to the outside, uh, and that's going to require some additional excavating. Uh, and that it is what it is. It, it has to happen. So I've staked out roughly kind of where the steps are going. I even have put in the first one, uh, and I will do a time lapse of that so you can kind of see that in process. Uh, and the door is another thing that I've been working on, so let me show you that. One thing you may have noticed from other earth bag builders is that they use box frames uh, for their doors and windows. A uh, box frame is just a, like a placeholder that you put in uh, to hold the rectangular shape of your door or window as you build earth bags around it. And then when you're finished, you pull out the frame and you can install the door. Uh, I'm going to do that just a little bit differently in that I'm going to build the box frame and then I'm going to actually install the door inside of the box frame. Uh, and this will allow me to check to make sure that the door or the window stays operational as I'm pounding bags around the frame. Well, that's it for now. I want to give a special shout out to the staff at Peter Howe Elementary and Nicole uh, for your support with this project. It means more than you'll ever know. And uh, I also uh, I apologize for the amount of time since the last video. It's been a while. and. Uh, I shot some video and it was really windy and it did not turn out well, so uh, I just kind of quit for a while. But uh, I'll be out here for the next two months uh, working on this, so uh, I'll be posting videos as I go. Uh, thank you guys and we'll see you next time.